Look at this boy! Oh, look at that baby! Baby, baby! Woohoo! You got this! Andrew's. Well, Murray, you got the special touch. Beauty, buddy. Oh, brother. <laughs> Ain't that a beaut? Ain't that a beaut? Loves it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a blooper right there. Well, hello everyone, and welcome to part one of our multi-day winter camping snowmobiling an epic ice fishing trip on the beautiful coast of Labrador. First off, Andrew and I left Labrador West and traveled to Happy Valley Goose Bay, where we met up with our good friend and guide for this trip, Murray Parrott. Murray invited us to stay at his home with his wife Tanya and sons Olin and Rudy. They spoiled us throughout the evening with fine cuisine and loads of laughter. Given their home was located right on the edge of the mighty Churchill River, we were already struck by the beauty of the land, which would only forecast that which was to come. After a good night's rest, the sun greeted us in the morning, and we geared up our snowmobiles. Until you've taken a trip like this, it's hard to imagine how much equipment you actually need, and there's a balance of what to take or leave behind. Slays packed, we hit the trail to meet the rest of our team members. Eddie Bright and Mike Spurl. You'll see them up close later. Having never met these two men, Murray described them as two fine gentlemen and good hands to have on such a vast trip that we're about to take on. And here we go. Stay tuned for all of the excitement of this trip. We just stopped here to uh, Murray's cabin. We're 50 or 60 kilometers in, I guess, roughly. And we got a long ways to go yet. Beautiful day for traveling, though. The bays are uh, pretty good for traveling, uh, not too rough. Uh, one guy did have a sleigh tip over there, but luckily none got damaged. So we just stopped in here. Murray's picking on a bit of gear, and we're going to continue on our way. It looks like this might be one of the better days that we got, according to the weather forecast. But we're uh, fingers crossed it'll be. Uh, Sunny, sunny days. If not, we'll make the best of it anyway. This trip would see us traveling over 200 kilometers before we would reach our destination and head to the fishing grounds. The trek consisted mainly of lakes and groomed trails, but we had to closely stick to a predetermined route programmed into our GPSs, as ice conditions were a critical piece and could change at any moment and safety was at the top of our list. Of course, it wasn't very long we ran into our very first unique scene, a dog team training for upcoming events. They sure do love to run. Well, we're after traveling a little over 100 kilometers now. A little section of uh, groomed trail there, which was great. Nice little break from the rough uh, ice. Bay got pretty rough there. I don't know if you can see, guys can see it or not, but in their eyes and there are the Mealy Mountains. National Historic Site. Absolutely gorgeous and seem like they go on forever. Just stop for a quick break now, a little snack, and uh, we'll hit the trail again. Man, what a day for travel. <laughs> there you go. Oh, <laughs> oh, one eye protected. You got a trip. trip. <laughs> we got 150 kilometers in, and we oh, are losing the groom trail here shortly. We're going to go out to Bay for a while, and uh, it's probably close to anywhere from 80 to 100 kilometers left. So, there are ways to go yet. We're about 170 kilometers in now. That's not bad. 
we got heavy heavy loads like uh, I don't know three or four hundred pounds for sure so that's not too bad I'm just gonna put one can of gas in there now and continue on and that should get us down to our fishing spot there's Marty's buddy here just stopped there for a minute now to gas our machines and uh, two Nunetsi of what uh, conservation officers came by there so Whenever you come in on the Nazi vote land, you've got to get your permit. So don't forget. made it it's 220 kilometers or so and uh, here's the river going up through there I came in that way now we're gonna find a place to put our tents it is gone looking already there looks like somebody may have already had some in there before so find a spot and power our tents next step <laughs> Set up. Last time put in the stove. Well, we're all set up with the exception of the bunks. We won't, we're not going to set up the bunks until we get ready to go to bed, but uh, I think we'll take up something to get ready for supper now. Everything's still frozen in here, but it's so hot on top of this tent now. I think I'll lay whatever we're going to have for supper on top there, and it should thaw out by supper time. Andrew agrees. I think we'll have a nice steak for supper today. Look at the setup, Murray. I'm gonna do a lot. Oh, 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 got the porch on her. Always got the bunk set up already. Oh, yeah, we got, we got a bay. Look at that. <laughs> what a beautiful setup. You even got a light setup in there. Nice, Dad. Excellent, buddy. You're over here on the foam, are you, Murray? Yeah, I'm on the foam on the ground. Awesome. Yeah. I'm an old man on the pole, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Low seniority. Yeah. Well, oh, guys, we've had a long, long day traveling and uh, had a hard job getting wood. A hard job getting wood. The wood was not wet and was a uh, kind of rotten fur type thing. So, not the best wood in the world. It was a lot longer to get it and we had to split it all up and pack it under the bunk and that. So, now we're just kind of relaxing. Now it's soon time for bed. We had a little bite to eat earlier on and, uh, and now we're just kind of winding down. Long day. No, it's just the same. Glad we had the good weather. We'll see you guys in the morning. Well, we're just getting up here. Um, nice, 
night last night. I think it was the best that uh, either one of us ever slept in the tent, actually. It was nice and cozy. It wasn't that cold throughout the night there, so we had the fire um, turn right down low. And, um, yeah, it was nice. Even this morning, we kind of let the fire go out a little bit, so it wasn't that bad. So, we didn't burn a whole bunch of wood, which is good news. And uh, I feel pretty rested. We'll get some breakfast on the go here now, a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and then go check out the fishing situation. Coffee with our neighbors. Coffee time? Yeah, you can let's see my catch up. Coffee time? Was it your breakfast eat yet? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, seven coffee. Yeah, two, two to one shot, buddy. Two to one. Yeah. Not easy, man. That's all right. A little bit of supper. And it's the first time you used that gun, was it? That's the first time I used this old wingmaster. Eh? Beautiful gun, yeah. though. Yeah. yeah. An so, oldie. An oldie. That should work. So. Awesome. So Perfect. I want some uh, partridge poppers. So, Here you go. <laughs> so in the episode, Chuck, uh, partridge popper, partridge please. Poppers. You provide the food, and I got to cook them, eh? That's the deal. That's fine. That really makes the ice tiger look tall. Yeah. So the issue we got here now is that there's so much snow, we can't even get to the water. Uh, how long is the tiger? Five and a half feet long. Yeah, so Andrew's five digging out, uh, trying to see if we can get that a little lower now, trying to shovel out there. What you wouldn't come across? Stuff you'd never expect. Take two. Nice and warm down there anyway, Andrew. <laughs> Sweating. You're doing a good job. Keep going. Now, we Andrew, got it! Andrew's six feet tall and is just up to his shoulders. And we just got to the ice. There's so much snow up here. So it's a fair bit of effort. It should be, hopefully, we need for our effort. It's a clip, too. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bite so far. Been here for an hour and a half, probably something like that. Or actually, that's not true. Uh, Mike did have one bite, but uh, now with the way it's in the river here, we've heard that they kind of come and go too in waves. So we're waiting a little bit, and then we'll have to uh, go to Plan B. Whatever Plan B is, we haven't figured it out yet, but we'll get there. 
Plan B is ptarmigan sausages and beans with coffee and tea for lunch. Then we're going to redirect our attention on the outside of the bay. It's really windy today, but we want to give it a try. Ptarmigan breast is so clean and no fat. Just pure organic wild food. So good. <clears throat> Ptarmigan poppers are easy to make. Better if you got a cutting board. You almost like you're filleting a fish, but you go about halfway down the breast and cut it back. Don't cut it all the way through, cut it to about right there. So it's just a bit of meat hanging on. Then you open up your meat like that. And this is a jalapeno cream cheese. Don't be shy with it. Take a nice generous amount of that and put it right there like that. Basically get as much as you can on there. Close it back up. Take your bacon and wrap it up. There's a fair chunk of meat, so you want a couple pieces of bacon. And there you have it, ptarmigan popper. Now, fry those up in the pan later on. Ho ho ho, ho ho ho, delicious. Well with that we headed out on the bay ice to try our luck out there. It was blowing gusts of up to 60 kilometers an hour. So you will hear wind in a lot of these clips. We did set up a tent though on the ice to try and escape the howls and catch some decent footage for you guys to watch. Look at that boy, Eddie for the start. Beautiful, beautiful saltwater trout. Beauty, buddy. Beauty. Oh. Fish no, no. Oh. Andrew just got his line down. We got a uh, tent set up here to try to get in the wind a little bit. Just getting ready to put my hook down. Oh. Alright, Andrew's set up. I got mine set up. And just as fast as that, Eddie's after getting three. Three nice fish, too. Got one, brother. Look at that. First one of the day. Yes, sir. Look at that, boys. Look. Oh, that's nice. First that's nice. back way trout. Awesome. Wicked. Oh, not funny, though. Wow. Eddie got the magic, magic touch. There's no doubt about it. What a fish, brother. Oh, and here goes his first one. Good for you. Keep him over on the flat there, buddy. He's not huge, but... No way. Good eating, huh? Ho, ho, ho. On the board! Andrew Border on the board! Yeah, he's... He's after catching two or three on his jaw jacker there now. So I think I'll set up mine. Set off here, guys. Yeah, just two inches off the bottom. Turn around, let her work. Beautiful trout. Ain't that a beaut? Ain't that a beaut? Whew. Loves it. Oh, not la. Oh, 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 Andrew. What a monster. Beautiful fish. <laughs> You're just going to change his hook. Oh, it's a school went through there, la. Hitty got one. You got another one too, you, Mike? Yeah. Mike got another one. What was that one like? I'll nice. Take second one. That's yes, second sir, one. man. <laughs> Oh boy, it must be a big school of them went through, eh? Must be something going through there, yeah. 
Oh yeah, you changed the magic. Magic or something, did you? Release a fish and it's still just sitting in the hole there. <laughs> I'm gonna encourage him back down a little bit deeper now. Come on, then, my little buddy. There you go. Look at that Hunter Jaw Jacker special. Mercy me. There's the smaller one. And you'll get another one. You will release that one back in the hole, too. There we go, back down the hole. Trying several hooks today, but uh, Murray gave me this little small green one here and got some squid on there. The squid kind of stays on a little bit better. Back down the hole, you go. Yeah, all right, I guess not that big. Oh, got in the way. Just put the hook back in the hole. And Mr. Trout is there again. Oh, you're already fitting in the frame. Amazing. I'll even take that bait back, sir. Thank you. Murray got a nice one. Oh my! <laughs> oh my, oh my, oh my. Well, <laughs> that's your biggest one yet, buddy. Oh, oh brother. <laughs> this is crazy. That's a big crazy. I'd like to pause and give a shout out to Jennifer McIsaac and Jamie Burns. We're huge fans of the channel and were supposed to accompany us on this trip, but literally couldn't make it due to the highway being blocked with snow from a recent winter storm. Hope to see you guys on the next trip. Got to move some rice for supper. Well, we're just back to the camp now. Long day out on the ice, and oh, it was a great day. I literally uh, ran out of GoPro batteries uh, just filming the fish that we caught. And uh, I only showed you a sample. It was constant the whole day, pretty much. A couple of short spells where we didn't get anything for a few minutes or half hour longest. But once they struck, they all struck in big schools. And now we're getting tired again. And uh, back to the camp now for the evening. Have something to eat. Go and have a chat with the boys and hit the bunk again. Absolutely fabulous. You cannot believe what's going on here. It's so great to experience what we're experiencing right now. Stay tuned to part two of this incredible adventure on the coast of Labrador as we continue to fish, snowmobile, cook delicious wild game, and see sights and sounds rarely seen by most people. Until next time, take care of each other, get outside, and enjoy everything outdoors. We'll see you next time. Guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs>